It looks like my galaxy's a little green. I'll just hit it with SCNR and call it a day. Great. Oh my God, just stop. What are you doing? Welcome to SETI Astro. Every program has it, right? Under Pix Insight, All Process, or Noise Reduction, SCNR, it's right here. SCNR stands for Subtractive Chromatic Noise Reduction. In Serial, you could find it just under Image Processing, Remove Green Noise. Same kind of little screen, Subtractive Chromatic Green Noise Reduction. And in SETI Astro Studio, I have a Remove Green button, SCNR style green channel removal. Same, same deal. But I'm here to say, stop using it. <laughs> um, it, you're, you're, you're not removing noise. I don't know where the name came from. This is not removing green noise. Huge pet peeve of mine, this is not removing noise. It is destroying your signal. If you use this, especially in the linear state, you might as well just delete your green channel and replace it with the average of the, the red and the blue. So let's get into what these green noise reduction, SCNR, remove green functions are doing, why you should stop using them and what else you could be doing. All right, before we get into the examples and why this thing is just, just shouldn't be used as much as it is, let's talk about what it's doing. Now they all do the same thing. You're either going to take the average of the red and the blue channels or the max between the red and blue channels or the minimum between the red and the blue channels at the pixel level. So if this particular pixel has RGB values, take that pixel's R and B average and then find the green value for that as well. And then just take the minimum. What that means is the image you get out of SCNR, if the green value was higher than like the average between the red and the blue, it just gets clipped at that average. So it's, it's not noise you're getting rid of. All the signal, <laughs> All the signal above the average of the red and the blue channels just gets clipped there. That data is destroyed then. It's gone. No, no stretchings bringing it back. You just took anything that was above the red and the blue and just threw it away. <laughs> that's, that's how to describe it. And then if you do have the option to, option to preserve lightness, all that's going to do is take the lightness that was there before and then scale the three channels back up to, to match that lightness value so the image doesn't get a bunch dimmer when you clip all that green out of there. So that's what this is doing. You're literally taking data from your green channel and clipping it to the average of the, the red and the blue channels if the green channel is above it. Now where this could be especially dangerous is in linear data where your entire green channel might be above the red and the blue channels. If that's the case, you might as well just delete the green channel. Forget it. And, <laughs> and just average the red and the blue. Because that's all SCNR is going to do for you. It's not a noise removal. I Again, I can't stress this enough. It's not green noise. Green is going to be your most sensitive channel and have the highest SNR especially for OSC cameras and you are literally destroying that data you're clipping it you're, you're just throwing it away it's not removing green noise you're removing your green signal so I have two images here typical kind of OSC images where the green channel is stronger just just coming out of the gate than the red and the blue channels again it's more sensitive not only do you have double the pixels so the SNR is going to be higher but most sensors are just more sensitive in the green as well. So let's go ahead and look at this Andromeda one here. Again, this is linear data. So I kind of zoomed in on the histogram and, and we could see here's the red channel, the blue channel and where the, the green channel lives right now. Now, if we were to just apply SCNR, remove green, green noise reduction, whatever we want to call it, and I'll, I'll turn off preserve lightness so it really doesn't um, mess with what we're, we're showing here. But if you click apply, now here's, here's our image. And you can see the green went right in between the, the red and the blue. Now this is going to be no different in PixInsight. Here's PixInsight. I got a histogram open here as well. We're going to just run uh, SCNR. And now the green went right between the, the red and the blue. Like I said, it's, it's the same uh, amongst all these programs. Now I want to show you why this tool is so dangerous. Let's go ahead and open Pixel Math. 
Now I'm going to say if the green channel is greater than the average of the red and the blue, give me a value of 1. If it's less than that, give me a value of 0. So this is going to show us on our image right here, this one, all the pixels that are greater than the average between the red and the blue, which will be all the pixels that are going to get their signal clipped. So let's just go ahead and uh, run it. And there we go. It's almost a completely white image. That means if you were just to run uh, this noise reduction like we did, this green noise reduction, and you could see there's spots where the green was less in some of the cores of these stars, but almost every single pixel is white here. For every white pixel in this image, that is data that is getting clipped and is destroyed by SDNR uh, using it on this particular image. We can go ahead and run it on um, this other image here uh, just to, to show it too. So, so here's, here's galaxies, stars, you know, all, all that fun stuff. Let's go ahead and run the same pixel math on this one. And we can uh, transfer over our zoom. And you can see, again, just which pixels is going to ha have green channel data clipped and, and gone. So all these pixels are going to have just their data destroyed. And again, it's not, it's not a SAS Pro thing. This is, this is just how SCNR works. Here's the same pixel math now in PixInsight. We can see which pixels exactly are going to be the affected ones. And again, very easy to see that almost every pixel is going to have its, its data clipped. And this is not what we want. We don't want to be clipping our data. You're not removing green noise. You're removing data. And again, yes, if you just drop SCNR on here, now it looks like it's colored balanced, but you can see over in the histogram these uh, jagged chunks. That means the data itself has just been pulverized to the point where it's been bucketized into these groups. And it's no longer that smooth curve you saw, right? So it's, it's all been quantized and clipped. So what do you want to be doing to your image? You want to be color calibrating it. Color calibration, whether that's my stellar base white balancing or SPCC or SFCC or color calibration, that's going to scale your channels relative to each other to achieve that white balance and that color calibration. You're not going to clip your green data that way. So I have up here my celebrate white balancing. I'm going to click apply. That's going to white balance to all the stars. So all the stars are going to be, you know, a neutral gray. And now I get a before and after of where all the stars landed after the stellar base white balancing. And you can see the image is now color balanced. Here's the before and the after. The green is gone and nothing was clipped. And that's the important bit. But Frank, I hear you say, what if I have my hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur and use something like Perfect Palette Picker and get my SHO image or 4X image? That's a lot of green. And I agree it's a lot of green. And yeah, you could use something like SCNR and just blast it away. But, but what did we just do? The green channel in the SHO palette is our hydrogen signal. It is the strongest signal we're going to have. And if you use SCNR, just brute force right away to get rid of the green in your palette, you just destroyed a huge portion of your signal. You clipped it. You clipped it between the oxygen and the sulfur. It just, you just threw it away. And again, even something like a, a Forex palette, there's green in here. And using SCNR, you could remove that green down in the core. Um, but again, you're removing that signal. So in these cases, what should you be doing? You should be using masks and curves and items like that to adjust the scaling in the curvature of the green channel itself to get it in line with the red and the blue, not to clip the data like SCNR is going to do. It's absolutely clipping your data. So here I have a green color mask I'm going to use. I'm going to give it just a, a little bit of blur here. I'm going to preview the mask. I'm going to go ahead and, and apply my mask here. And again, we can see what it's masking and what it's protecting. And now we can grab things like curves. Grab our green channel. And then you could bring the green channel down. Maybe we want to bring the reds up in that same exact area. And you need to slowly work your data like this. Now let's go ahead and, and, and make a different mask now. 
And you can see we're whittling away at this green. And for a traditional SHO palette, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to slowly whittle away at your green to get it to a spot that you think um, you like about it. And again, nothing, nothing indifferent in Picks Insight here. We can drop a, a color mask on here to make a, a color mask for us. Maybe we want to blur that mask a bit. We'll apply its mask. And again, we're going to have to do things like bring the green down. Then start bringing in the reds. Then maybe we want to toss that mask and throw on a, throw on a different mask. Like here's the cyans, which were right down in the core. We could apply that mask, open up curves, bring the reds up in the core there, and pull the greens down as well. And you're just going to have to keep walking your data like that. It's so tempting to use something like SCNR or remove green noise and just take a sledgehammer to your actual data and uh, just have it average the red and the green. That works. It does. But you are destroying your data. And... I hope you won't. I, I hope this changes your guys' mind and it is worth processing it in such a manner that your data isn't destroyed because chances are that data you're destroying is some of your strongest SNR data there is, whether it's hydrogen and something like an SHO palette or your green channel in an OSC camera. That's gonna be your highest signal to noise ratio. And right now, if you use SCNR, all it does is destroy that. That's not saying SCNR doesn't have a place. You're towards the end of your po post-processing and you've pretty much reached the end of your post-processing and there's just a, you know, just a, a, a green hue that, you know, is, is just there. That's just not to your liking. Um, and it's just, you know, that, that subtle bit going around like the, the, the limb of Andromeda here. Now hitting it with a little SCNR. Yep, it's clipping that green. I understand it's clipping that green but that's okay for what I'm trying to do here. Another great use time is, let's say you did your own star combination. I had hydrogen and oxygen stars in here and I just did an HOO uh, palette with the stars only. And a lot, of, a lot of the times when you get done stretching them, you get like these green and teal stars. Green stars don't exist. Now is a perfectly valid time. Hit this stars only image with SCNR and let it take care of those green stars. Now they're all blue. Uh, so, you know, this is a perfectly valid use case as well. There's, so there's times you're going to want to use remove green. Just don't call it remove green noise. It's not noise. Know that it's going to clip your data. Be okay with that when you use it. And you're going to have more data rich, better images at the end by minimizing the use of uh, SCNR and understanding what it's really doing. Well, I hope this was helpful to some people out there, especially new people to the hobby. Please comment, like, and subscribe.